Next question is from Grace Your Presence. What makes you most proud to be an American? Oh, Because wow. I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> you know, um, I'll, I'll start this because... Uh, it's you know, now, being proud of being something that you had no choice to be, that's kind of an interesting question. I was born here. I didn't choose to be born here. But here's why I am proud of uh, America itself or why I, I look at it and I think um, it's, an, it's an amazing example for the world. Now, when I think of America, I don't necessarily think of the country of America, but rather the ideas mm -hmm. uh, that it was founded on. The reason why I think of that is because the ideas that this country were founded on, they were not exercised perfectly, and they still aren't. But the ideas that they were found that this country was founded on is constantly driving America to change and improve itself. I don't know of any other country that criticizes itself and is willing to change painfully yeah. Yeah. decade after decade like uh, this country. I mean, uh, when you, if you go back to the founding of this country, the ideas that it was founded with were truly crazy and radical in comparison to the rest of the world at that time. You had a country that literally developed a government. This, is, this was weird for the time. Nobody really did this before. But they designed a government to protect the people from government to protect the people from uh, tyranny. That's what the whole, if you read the Constitution and you look at the framework, you know, besides all the stuff we've added to it over the last you know, few hundred years, if you look at the framework, every single thing in the Bill of Rights is designed to protect people from tyranny. One of the things that, that, that they were trying to protect people from was tyranny of the majority. One of the biggest Peep things that people have uh, are confused over is the you know we call America a democracy, which is partially true. We are a democracy, but we're not a pure democracy. We're a a constitutional republic, and we elect our officials democratically. Meaning, we vote for our officials, but we have certain things that are protected that no that a majority vote can't take away from you. For example, uh, freedom of speech. Your freedom of speech, even if. 60% of the population votes that you shouldn't be able to say something. They can't take away your ability to say what you want to say. There's a whole nother process they'd have to go through to amend the Constitution. Now, these ideas were not exercised perfectly. You know, we had this concept of liberty that every person was born with rights, inalienable rights. And according to the founders, it's because they were bestowed upon us by our creator, by God. So God creates everybody. Everybody has these rights that nobody can take away because God gave them to you. But of course, when the country was founded, we had slaves. Women were not treated the same. They couldn't vote. So it wasn't exercised perfectly. But it was those ideas that drove the, the, that drove government to, to fight for the freedom of slavery mm -hmm. or to, for, to free the slaves, excuse me, that drove the civil rights movement. It drove... Uh, to give women the ability to vote. And it continues to drive. These ideas continue to push us. It's a constant refining process. Yes, to change and to grow. And it's these ideas that I think we should always defend. That's what makes me very proud. And I tell you something right now. The most, the people that you'll tend to find who tend to be the most, who understand these things the most are the children of immigrants because there's a contrast. Mm -hmm. You know, I am the the, the product of, of poor immigrants I know the opportunity that was uh, provided here because of uh, a lot of the freedoms that are here. I saw my, my, I mean, my dad came here with zero education. He was very poor, and he, he created a, a middle-class life. I had a friend whose parents escaped the Soviet Union. They're the most staunch Americans you'll ever meet in your entire life because mm -hmm. his parents escaped real uh, tyranny um, at the time. We're definitely not perfect. We're far from perfect. I don't think perf perfection can ever be accomplished. But those ideas, the ideas that this country was formed on, are what continue to drive us. And again, I don't know any country that's willing to beat the shit out of itself yeah. over and over again to continue to progress and grow. And as painful as it is, it's freaking awesome. And I, you know, I hear stuff all the time I disagree with. People say things and yell things and do things that I totally disagree with. But I will always fight to defend the right to say and do those things because uh, I believe in those concepts. Yeah, and I'll always listen. I mean, we're the ultimate melting pot. I think that's that's the biggest thing that I 
I really appreciate the idea of America being the place where um, it's so culturally diverse. It's so diverse, like individuals are so different across the board. You're just not going to find that in any other place place in the world where, uh, you know, you can interact with so many different ideas and, and, you know, different types of backgrounds. And uh, I think that uh, we don't celebrate that as much as now we, we try to segment that off and divide and, 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 and really try to then regroup and, and, and try to go back to old ideas of where, you know, in other countries, everybody has the same background, same experience, same skin color, same everything. Uh, and, and to me, this is where all the innovation happens is when you collectively bring everybody together and, and work together and unify and move forward forward and I, I really just that that idea I just don't ever want to die I want us all to to get back to that m mentality oh yeah I've always I've always thought the whole um you know pride or proud thing um is 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 an interesting conversation because I, I like Sal you mentioned I, I don't feel proud uh to be American I feel blessed that's what I feel I feel I feel yeah. blessed that um, you know, I'm I'm not one generation. I'm three generations removed from this country. My family came from Mexico. I've been to Mexico enough times to be glad as shit that you know my my great grandparents made their way this way and had kids in America. And then to your point, Justin, that I look around and say we have to be the most diverse country and you know innovation so much to start here. Sure, there's tons of imperfections and areas that we can get better, but to your point, Sal, that's one of the beautiful things about America is we are always evolving and changing, and I feel like we evolve and change more rapidly than almost any other country around. Uh, and I think just the fact that we are so diverse and so many people migrate and come here speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, that in itself is, I mean, you don't see that in any other country where people are flocking to get in so bad is because it is so great and it is so diverse but and i also recognize what comes with that like what comes with that are challenges you know you you have people with different cultures all melting in one area we're going to have a little bit of there'll be friction there's going to be friction yeah. and 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 again to sal's point that's what's beautiful about america is that even with all the friction and we, we're always trying to become better and i think that you know, I, I would like to see more empathy for for each other. I think that's what we, we lack mm -hmm. that sometimes, as and maybe that's the pride the pride sense. Yeah. Maybe sometimes we become so proud or so so caught up in being uh, uh, prideful over all this stuff, and we should have a little more humil humil humility. Excuse me, can't speak, and, and feel blessed that we all are in, in this situation, and have a little bit of patience and empathy for our neighbor. And, and know that we all are working to have a better place. And whether you have a, a belief that it should be this way or I, I have that way, at the end of the day, that's what's great about here is we can both agree to disagree. Well, yeah. you know, well, free countries are only ever going to be as good um, as its people. That means that, you know, because we have a certain level of freedom, we have to be good moral people. In order, You know, look, look at markets, for example. Let's just talk about free markets for a, sec a second. Free markets do one thing really freaking well. They give the consumer what they want, better than any other system in the world. But what if all the consumer wants is drugs, alcohol, and pornography? Well, that's what you're going to get a mm -hmm. lot of, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's it, it's a reflection of us, and so we have to rise to be good people so that this, this system provides us uh, what we want. But again, it's an idea, and it's an idea that, you know, as, as imperfect as we've been, that idea is what's driven us to progress, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Listen, 2008, okay, 2008 wasn't that long ago. Barack Obama was campaigning to become president of the United States. He campaigned and he openly was opposed to gay marriage. This is Barack Obama, Democrat, president. Everybody loves. And he said, I do not think marriage should be between a man and a woman. And that changed very rapidly. Now, if you said that, nobody would elect you almost nowhere. That's very, very rapid, rapid change. Again, it's not perfect, but um, but it, those ideas of liberty, of freedom, of, of protecting people's individual rights, which, by the way, rights do not mean you have a right to other people or to other people's stuff. It means you have a right to the stuff that you you can speak, you can protect yourself, you can worship, whatever, you can live the way you want so long as you don't infringe on the other rights of other people. But that idea is what pushes us to grow. It's also a painful one. I'll tell you what, you go to a Marxist country, you go to a country that, that doesn't have these protections and try to be a capitalist there. Yeah. 
try to speak out against what that government says you should do. They'll throw you to jail. They'll kill you. You know what? The one of the here's one of the beauties of everybody knows how anti-Marxism I am or anti-communism I am, right? Well, guess what? You can be in America if you want to a Marxist. You could literally yeah. have a you could have a, a pro you could have a whole protest and a parade praising uh, Karl Marx and and the 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 you know the past Soviet Union and whatever, and you're actually free to do that here. As much as I hate that and I disagree with you, tell me where you could do that in countries that don't value. Liberty and freedom. They don't. So, as again, as, and I know we're going through a difficult time in this country, but it's okay to take a step back and look. We've had all these protests, and that's beautiful. People are, are going out, and they're, pro, and they're Exercising free. Exercising their rights. And they're so, free to do it's so. It's also, I mean, good to recognize, too, to be, it's a positive thing that we have this division of progressives and conservatives. Oh, yeah. Um, I think of it just like the way we operate our Checks business. Checks and balances. Right. There is, there's always one of us who's trying to push us in a new direction or push us faster to do something. And there's always one of us that's going, uh, maybe we should ease in and slow. I don't think we should do that yet. And together we make great progress, right? And sometimes it's a little push and pull type of feeling, but you want that. You don't want one or the other. If you if everybody was conservative, we wouldn't move anywhere very fast at, uh, at all. Mm -hmm. If everybody right. was so progressive, we'd probably have a lot of hard lessons. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have this nice division of progressive and conservative people in this country, and we're kind of like, it, it's, it's, it doesn't need to be so angry though it doesn't need to be like that it's like no. and that's why this is why mind pump work behind scenes this is the way we are with the business there's always a progressive person there's always a conservative person in the conversation and sometimes it flip-flops sometimes one of us is more progressive about something one of us is more conservative about something and i feel like that's how our country is i think where it gets bad is when people start to identify with one or the other and they feel like they well, have to try to impose those ideas by all means necessary well and yeah and the big problem becomes when you think the other person's the, the other person has a different opinion than you because they're evil right then there's nobody there's no discussions no there's no compromise it becomes there's, ideology there's no listening it's you're evil that's it and now what do you do to evil people you punch them you kill them you silence them you jail them that is a dangerous slope you don't want to go down. Rather, the better approach, in my opinion, is to consider, and this is the truth. I'm not saying this is everybody, but consider that most people are kind of like you. We're all very, we're more similar than we are different. Okay, and they're probably they probably have their opinions because they think it's better for people, not because they're evil, right? But rather because they think it's better for people. Now their opinion's different than yours, but they also want something to happen that's good. So now let's have a conversation. Right. Of course, if you think they're evil. I'm not. I'm not gonna have a conversation with Hitler. I don't right. want to hear your ideas. You're an evil person. Well, right. geez, man, if you think everybody on the other side is Hitler, you're gonna have some problems.